I have a follow-up to this question. No, it's not. It's much simpler. Um, but it's going to give us it's going to give us a new concept. Okay, so read this with me. It's a follow-up to this number that we got here. Um, and I promise, actually, it's like two lines are working. That's it. Not as nearly as involved as this. What single amount of money, if we invested it now, just deposit it into the bank account and then just let it sit, right? What single amount of money would attract interest, like if we put it in and let it sit there for an amount of time, to be equivalent to, to this, to the $100 installments over nine years? That's, that's what this produces, right? That's A9, okay? So I'm interested in, what if I didn't do installments over and over again? What if I just took like a big heap of money, popped it in the bank and then walked away? After nine years, how much would I need to have put in to still arrive at this point. Okay, so I'm kind of like, this is my answer now, right? Now, this is where I'm going to return. Actually, I should use my different color. I'm going to return to, not even, right? The idea that you started with mistakenly, which is compound interest, right? So I'm saying, um, and I'm going to call it X for now. There's some value. There's some value. And I can just apply compound interest to it, and I'm going to get to here, right? So if I apply compound interest to just this single amount, what does that look like? What formula do I have for this? We've already referred to it earlier today. Yeah, this is, it's going to be A equals um, a principal, and I'm calling that X, right? Times 1 plus R, which we've already seen is 1.1, to the power of N, right? And we can fill this in, everything except for the X, right? What's the amount we want to end on? Yep, that guy right there, so let's pop that in. Whoops, I wrote my numbers in the wrong order. Sorry that. Okay, that's that. Okay, same amount of time. So X is the unknown. I've got my 1.1 here. And then there's the, uh, there's the 9, which is how long this thing was going for. Okay, now I promise this is going to be simpler. Look, I just have to do some division here. Yeah, the calculator is going to do most of the heavy lifting for me. I'm going to do this figure divided by whatever I get out of that compound interest calculation. Oh, yeah. Can you go to your calculator and tell me what that is? Oh, no. Let me do some head um, uh, where's, uh, the, where's the plus one? What plus one? Uh, x bracket so let me just... What plus one? Sorry, I missed... X1 plus R, R. You're talking about this part? Oh uh, yeah, I've, I've done it. It's right there. 1 plus R is 0 0.1. Yeah, that's the, that's the interest rate. Right, the interest rate? Has someone given me a number at this point? Please? Anyone? Parent, you got it? Uh, 576.75. Ooh, I got different. I, yeah, I feel like I got a different I number. 575.9. Did you hear that? 575.9? Yeah. Hmm. Put 903, yeah. Yeah? Is that okay? I'm trying to remember back to my earlier working. Okay. So, even though, put your, um, put your pens and your calculators down for a moment. Even though that was a relatively simple thing to do, we've actually introduced a whole new idea. The whole new idea is captured in this question. Um, but I want to provide some um, names under this, right? Think about this. Pens out of hands, right? We have an installment, a deposit that happens regularly, okay? And then if we cast our eyes into the future, we get this figure here, okay? This figure. I want you to take that, put a big box around it. And I want you to give it a new name because this is the value of our investment or our superannuation or whatever in the future, our value in the future. We call this guy a future, future value. Crazy, right? No way. I know. I They're very creative sometimes, okay? Now, you might have heard this phrase before, right? Future value. Now, I want to compare that or contrast it rather to this guy. This is kind of like what this value is, has grown from, but today, right? It's the value right now. It's not in the future, it's in the present. So we call it present value. Okay, yep, question? Where would we sub the 575.9 to get to the 1357? Yes, that is the question. Okay, let me, let me try and show you this, okay? Um, by the way, that is, see how I left space for a heading? That is the heading, present and future value. And yeah, it's, it's really important in business. It's all over. Okay. 
Now, you guys are going to do some questions on the basis of this, but the most important thing I want to get across to you today is what on earth this means. Like, why does this matter? So I'm going to try and give you a visual. Okay, what are you looking at? Each each of these green dots, each of these green dots represents everything that we have just written on the board in your books, right? It's installments, money going in, and then interest calculations. Now, it's a bit difficult when you just see the numbers. So what I'm going to try and do is show for you how it's growing. Um, maybe this makes a little more sense to you, right? Now, remember, every year, at the end of every year, there's an installment of $100. It kind of happens instantly, right? So that's what those vertical lines are. And you can see each vertical line, it's the same chunk every time because it's $100 every time. Does that, that make sense? Yes? Okay. But then you also have these sort of intermediate parts, right? You've got this um, line, it starts off quite gentle, but by the end it's quite steep actually, it's increasing. That's not the installments, what is that? Interest. That's the interest calculation, right? And you should expect, by the way, that towards the right hand side up here, the reason it gets steeper is because there's more. Is there's more stuff that you're applying the 1.1 uh, the 10% interest toward, right? So that's why towards the end here, like if you have a look at that gap over in the top right hand corner, like it jumps up um, very dramatically because 10% of a large amount is a fairly large amount. Following so far? Okay. Now, what I try to think about is that um, that, that last number, uh, 135795, right? That's what we're calling future value, okay? It's the height where you end up. Is that okay? Like that's visually what it represents, okay? Now before and then connect that to present value, I want you to look back at where we worked out, like we, we brought out the formula, do you remember that? Because we we're like, I don't have time for um, evaluating all this in my calculator. So we went to the sum of a GP, do you remember that? Now I want you to have a look over here um, on my left hand side, I've given you those equations, right? Do you recognize that equation? That's the sum of a GP. You can see the A and the R to the N minus 1. Do you see it all there? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'll take away this, um, all these lines here. I'm going to show you what that gives us, right? And I hope it makes sense. This is an exponential curve, right? We're at the beginning of the exponential curve, so you don't quite see the crazy takeoff part, but hopefully you can see its gradient getting steeper and steeper over time, right? Coming back to what we were looking at in continuous random variables, in statistics, right? You remember how we often have discrete situations, like things happen one step at a time, and we also sort of model them with continuous situations. They're hugely valuable to us, right? Okay, now how do we compare this to present value, this final number that we have over here? Um, present value is a time, sorry, it's a quantity of money that happens now present, right? So it isn't on the right-hand side of the graph. This is as time progresses. Where should present value be? present, it's now, that's going to be all the way on the left hand side, right, at the beginning, like these nine years have not elapsed yet, right? So the number of present value is, is this figure, I, I don't know why I got something different there, I think something happened with my rounding, but we're in the right ballpark, right, $575, $576. Now what does it mean to take that and then apply compound interest to it? Well, it's to take away that model right there. It's applying that same idea without adding any more of those steps. You see, this is just letting it sit. And compound interest just does its thing like a smooth curve, and you end up at the exact same point. Okay? So two different ways to go about it. We can either, I'm going to get rid of, no, I'll leave that there. We can either go in these steps. You can see by doing $100 every year. How many times, by the way, does he do this? $100. Aaron does it every year, nine years, so it's nine times. So how much does he actually deposit? $900, right? As compared to just depositing 575, if we did that, it's like, it's half, right? And if you do that and just not, not touch it, it will still grow to that same amount. So this is talking about the power of compound interest, okay?